Hello, I am Seamus Donahue of Eve University, and this is an explanation of contracts. Contracts are an in-game method for securely exchanging ISK and assets between players, corporations, and or alliances. Uh, to explain the contract process, I'm going, to use my, I'm going to use my ship as an example. So first of all, uh, let me right-click my ship and leave ship. There we go. So now I'm in my capsule. There's my ship in the ship's hangar, in the ship's window that is. I'm going to right click the basilisk and I'm going to create contract. Now that takes me to the first page of the contract creation process and this sets some basic options here. Uh, the first set of options you need to choose whether it's an item exchange, an auction contract, or a career contract. and I will ex explain each one at a time. Item exchange contracts are simple contracts that say, I will give these items and this amount of ISK in exchange for those items and that amount of ISK. Right. So the next option is the availability. That is, who can see the contract. I can make it public, I can make it viewable only to people in my alliance, only to people in my corporation, or to a specific individual or corporation. If I collect, if I click private, right, you do have to know at least the start of the entity's name. So for example, uh, if I just put killed and try to click next, the game's going to tell me that there are multiple matches and it's going to ask me to specify which one. Right. It can only match the start of a string, so uh, keep that in mind when you try to do a partial search. If there's only one possible... So if I just put Keldoom, I get two search results, a Keldoom and a Keldoom Ravan. And you can right-click each entry and select Show Info. All right. And you can double-check the player corporation that are in, they're in, what alliance they're in, how long they've been in that player corporation, you can take a look at their employment history, and so on and so forth. If there's only one possible match for the partial name that you've put in, the game is going to proceed with the one match that it finds. You can, ver you can verify the identity at the end of this process. So the second step is to choose the items that you want to involve in the contract. The contract cannot deal with multiple items scattered across multiple stations. It can deal with multiple items, but they must all be in the same station. So at the top of this window, you can left click this entry you can left click this row and you get a list of stations where you currently have assets. Alright. I'm just gonna stick with my current station for the moment. I have the basilisk checked on. I'm going to click next. Uh, the game warns me that this is not an empty container, and it will tell me what's in the container and ask me to verify that I want to continue. I'm going to click yes. On the third page of the contract creation process, I specify how much ISK I'm going to pay as part of the contract. I can also specify how much ISK I'm going to receive as part of the contract. Strangely enough, you can have non-zero numbers in both of these fields, so pay attention to which fields you're typing a number into. If you're reading an, a contract that was issued by somebody else, also check for that uh, niggling little detail because they may be saying uh, numbers in, uh, they may have put numbers in both fields as well. Right. The next line, actually you know what, let me put 100 million ISK. All right. That's actually a little bit cheap for a fully rigged basilisk. Uh, the expiration on the contract is how long it's going to stay up uh, before it's automatically pulled down for timing out. Right. So in this case, if I s set it to two weeks, Keldum Ravan has two weeks to decide whether to accept or reject the contract. If he doesn't decide within that amount of time, it's automatically rejected. The expiration time can only be set to one of four options, one day, three days, one week, or two weeks. Uh, you can type in a little blurb uh, for the description, whatever you want, a rigged logistics ship. If you also want to request items, you click on the checkbox, 
and in the item type field you can type in whatever it is that you want to uh, request. Now for this type of search uh, it's not going to match just the start of the string, it can match any part of the text string. So if I put in stasis web of fire and then click somewhere, it's going to present me with this list of possible items. I need to choose an exact item type. All right. So I can look through the list and decide which type of item it is that I'm requesting. Let's say, let me double click the Federation Navy Stasis Web of Fire module, and I can specify how many of that item I want as part of the contract. So I'm requesting 100 million ISK and two Federation Navy Stasis Web of Fires. So once I've specified that, I can click the Add Item button, and that gets added to the list right here. This is a list of items that you're requesting as part of filling the contract. So if whoever wants to accept the contract doesn't have these items available, they can't accept the contract. Right. So once I've specified all these options, I can click the Next button. And here I have a summary of the contract details. So the contract type is item exchange. The description is whatever I typed in. Uh, be careful, the description can be anything that the contract issuer wants to put in there. It may have nothing whatsoever to do with the actual contents of the contract. Be very careful when you read somebody else's contract. Also be very careful when you set up your own contracts. The availability. If you're making it available privately only to a particular entity, you can left-click the link for that entity and make sure that it's the correct person. Um, so Keljum Ravon, Eve University, Ivy League. Uh, again, you can double-check all this information. Uh, the contract will state what location is involved, which station, as well as the expiration date, what sales tax, broker's fees, uh, or deposit is involved. and uh, I will pay zero ISK, I will receive 100 million ISK, and I'm selling a basilisk with these contents. Basically, I'm selling a basilisk with these contents, and I'm asking for 100 million ISK and two Federation Navy stasis web of fires. If I've set up the contract, if I think I've set up the contract correctly, if all the details look right, I can click finish and actually issue the contract. Uh, the broker's fee is not refundable. All right. I don't want to actually sell the basilisk, so I'm going to click cancel. Yes, I want to cancel the contract. So let me right click and show you what an auction contract, how an auction contract is set up. So I'm going to create contract, I'm going to set auction, let's leave the availability at public, and I will click next. Again, choose the station where the items are involved, choose the items in question, uh, click next. This is not an empty container, yes I know. Uh, let's suppose I want to set a starting bid. So the way auctions work, you set a starting bid and you might set a buyout. You also set an auction time, which can be one day, three days, or a week. So I'm going to set this to a week, and I'm going to set the starting bid as 100 million ISK. And if I left click on another field, it will put in comments for me. So 100 million ISK. Uh, you can click the base price button to try and have the game calculate a price for you, but this is calculated using mineral, uh, the mineral worth of the ship, which may not actually be anywhere near the actual value of the ship. Tech 2 ships in particular, Tech 2 modules, the base price is going to be much lower than what you can actually sell them for or buy them for. So be very careful about this option. So the starting bid is 100 million ISK and if I left it like this and issued the contract, uh, anybody who was searching con the public contracts for basilisks would find my auction uh, contract up and the starting bid is 100 million ISK. So somebody can bid 100 million and somebody else might take a look at it and say you know what? I'll try to bid on that. I'll bid 105 million. And then somebody else will bid maybe 108 million. This process continues on for the auction time. In my case, that would be one week. And whoever had posted the highest bid by the end of the week is the one who's going to get the contract. 
Some players will not bother bidding until the contract is almost expired, uh, which makes it much less likely that somebody else is going to outbid them. All right. But anyway, whoever posts the highest bid uh, by the end of the week, or whatever the auction time is, they're the one who gets the item, and you get paid the bid amount. You can set a buyout price. For example, uh, I'm going to say 200 million. And what that means is, bids start at 100 million. But if anybody is willing to pay 200 million, we can close the deal right now. We can stop the auction early. So if somebody actually does buy out the contract, they will pay 200 million esque, and they will get the uh, basilisk right away. Again, you can specify a description, which is completely arbitrary on your part as the contract issuer. Uh, when you're satisfied with the details, click Next. And again, you would review the details on the contract. All right. In this case, there's a sales tax, there's a broker's fee, there's a deposit that you have to pay. The broker's fee and the deposit are not refundable. I th think you get the deposit back if the contract actually sells. Otherwise, it just disappears into the ether. All right. So once you've uh, once you're once you've reviewed the details of the contract and you're satisfied with the details, you can click Finish to issue the contract. Uh, by the way, public contracts are limited to the region. Private contracts are not. So if you issue a pri private contract to somebody, it can be for any station in known space. If it's a public contract, it's got to be limited to the region. So nobody would be able to bid on this basilisk unless they were somewhere in every shore. I don't want to actually issue this contract, so I'm going to click Cancel. Yes, I want to cancel. And the last type of contract is uh, Courier. So Courier is I'm going to pay somebody else to move something for me. And as an example, let me put in private. A very uh, one of the more well-known uh, player corporations known for couriering things around for pay is Red Frog Freight. So if I can specify not only the name of a character, I can specify a corporation or an alliance. So if I just put Red Frog and click Next, uh, the game's going to try to match the name against the names of any player characters, corporations, or alliances. And here is Red Frog Freight. So I can click Show Info. Uh, by the way, if you actually want to use Red Frog uh, to move your stuff around in-game, make sure you take a look at their website. All right. But anyway, uh, just to show you how this type of contract works, double left click. So now we're on page two. This is the source station the where I specify the things that I want moved and where they're starting from. Uh, the volume is displayed and they're particularly important for courier contracts because in a courier contract the entire contract package has to be moved as a single unit. It can't be subdivided, even if you're dealing with items that are normally uh, that can normally be subdivided. If you're issuing a courier contract for thirty giant, I'm sorry, for ten giant secure containers, well, ten giant secure containers. Each giant secure container is three thousand cubic meters, so ten of them is thirty thousand cubic meters. Anybody who accepts such a contract is going to need 30,000 cubic meters in their cargo hold in order to move that thing. They can't subdivide it into the 10 individual giant secure containers without breaking the contract, without breaking the contract package, and that does break the contract itself. They fail the contract. So keep that in mind when issuing a contract. The total volume will be displayed down here, 107,000 cubic meters in my case. And the game warns me this is not an empty container. And then the game warns me that this is a large cargo. Basically, only a jump freighter or a freighter can move this. If I'm sure I want to continue, I click yes. I have to specify where I want this stuff moved to. And if I type in a partial name, ALD, and I click search, uh, it's going to show me a list of stations that start, whose names start off with ALD. 
and that's all stations in Aldegolf, Aldali, Aldic, Aldular, Aldranet, and Aldrat. In my case, uh, usually I might have something moved to Aldrat 9 Pater Tech School because that's where the university headquarters is located. Alright, so you can double left click an item, oh, one of those stations, and it'll put the full name of the station in there for you, Aldrat 9 Pater Tech School. The next field is the reward. This is how much I'm willing to pay to have my basilisk moved. And the next field after that is the collateral. That's how much the courier has to pay if he fails the contract. Like, for example, if he gets blown up en route and the basilisk is destroyed. Well, if he gets destroyed while trying to satisfy this courier contract, uh, and loses the basilisk, I get the collateral. By the way, if it's uh, you always want to set a collateral that's appropriate to the value of the cargo being moved. If you set a collateral that's too low, the courier could always fail the contract and just keep the cargo, because the cargo is more valuable than the collateral he paid. So be very careful about that sort of thing. Make sure the collateral is at least a little bit higher than what you would be willing to sell the cargo for. The expiration is the same as the expiration for the other uh, for the item exchange contract. This is how long the contract is going to remain posted before it gets taken down because nobody wanted to accept it. All right, so if I set this for two weeks, it, I'm sorry, if I set this for three days, that means that um, the contract will stay up for three days, and if nobody accepts it, uh, the contract is cancelled. The next field is the number of days to complete. Once the contract has been accepted, how long am I willing to wait for this stuff to be delivered? If seven, if I, if I put seven here and seven days go by and it hasn't been delivered, the courier fails the contract and I get the collateral. If the courier manages to get the cargo to the destination station and delivers the package, then the reward will be paid automatically and the collateral that the courier had to pay up front will be returned back to the courier. All right. The reward and the collateral are kept in escrow. You can't get the collateral unless the contract has failed. All right. The courier can't get the reward unless the contract has been completed. Finally, you have the description, again, which is optional, whatever random blurb you want to put in here, and the game will tell you this route is 15 jumps and you are paying an average of two-thirds of a million isk per jump. Click next, and if all the details seem correct to you, you can issue the contract. All right. Again, uh, you can left-click the link if it's uh, if the availability is private and not public, and double-check that you're issuing the contract to, correct, to the correct entity. All right. Whether or not anybody is going to accept the contract is up to them. They may decide to re if it's a private contract, they may decide to reject it. If it's a public contract, people might just look at it, yawn, and move along, and nobody's going to accept your contract. All right. So if you're satisfied with all the details of the contract, you can click Finish. Uh, otherwise, you can click Previous and change some details. I'm just going to cancel. All right. If you've issued a contract that hasn't been accepted yet, and you want to yank it down early, you can go to Neocom contracts go to the my contracts tab and let's see action issued to or by owner Seamus Dunhu status outstanding contract type all and get contracts in my case I don't have any outstanding contracts right now but if you had a contract posted that wasn't accepted yet it would then be listed here you can right click the contract and select delete contract that will cancel it, and the items involved will be returned to your hangar. You don't get a refund on the broker's fees, but for most players, the broker's fees are not usually too serious. All right. So hopefully, that explains how to issue a contract. In the meantime, thank you for watching.